Hello and welcome back. In the last session, we covered a bit more about Docker Compose. We looked at how we can pass variables in the Docker Compose.yaml file. We also discussed about profiles, dependency management using depends on and build configurations. By now, you are comfortable with the basics of a Docker file. But are your images as small, secure and efficient as they could be? Probably not. Today, we are leveling up. We are moving from writing Docker files that work to writing Docker files that are excellent for production. We will unravel the mystery of multi-stage builds, clarify the critical difference between ARG and ENV, and demystify the entry point and CMD duo. And then put it all together in a hands-on lab that will slash our image size. Now, before we dive into the details, if you found this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to keep making more videos just like this one. Let's get started with this. Let's start with the common problem. Think about building an application written in Go uh, or C++ or any language that requires a compilation step. Your Docker file typically needs all the build tools like your compilers, binaries, uh, source code to create the final binary. But that final binary is all you actually need to run your application. All those build tools like your compilers, libraries are just dead weight, making your image bloated and increasing its attack surface. So how do we get the build tools in without shipping them? The old way was messy involving shell scripts and multiple Docker files. The modern elegant solution is to use multi-stage builds. A multi-stage build allows you to use multiple from instructions in a single Docker file. Each from instruction begins a new stage. You can selectively copy artifacts from one stage to another. This means you can have a heavy, fully featured stage for building your application and then a tiny minimal stage for running that application. Let me show you a conceptual example. So here, let's say this is the Docker file that we have. So here, this is my stage one where uh, we are using node 16 as our uh, builder. And then we have our app director and everything. And then I have my stage two, which will be used to create my minimal image. So here, this particular command. So this will create a dot dist directory with the optimized production code. And then we are copying that dist directory from uh, one stage to another stage. So you can see what happened here. The first stage, it uses this fat node 16 image with all the build tools. It runs npm run build to create our production assets. The second stage starts fresh from a tiny Nginx Alpine image. The key line here is the copy instruction where uh, we are using this hyphen hyphen from equals to builder, which is basically this particular stage. This, the second stage, it copies only the build dist folder from the build stage into this new clean stage. The final image does not contain the Node.js runtime, the source code or any other Node modules. It just contains the static files and Nginx. The size difference can be astronomical and that's what we will prove in our hands-on lab in some time. Now to start building smart images, we need to understand variables. So Docker has two types of variables. We have the ARG and ENV. It's crucial to know the difference. Let's start with ARG. The purpose of your ARG is for build time variables. They are used to pass parameters to the Docker build command, like setting a version number for a download. They are only available during the Docker build process in the run instructions. They are not accessible in the running container. You can declare it within your Docker file using this ARG key and then your variable name and the respective value. And then you can overwrite this from the command line when you're running the Docker build command. I will show that in some time. And then we have the ENV instruction. So ENV is for runtime environment variables. They are used to configure containers environment once it's running. They are available during the build and also in the running container. Any process you run inside the container can see these variables. You can declare it within your Docker file using the env key and then your uh, variable name and then the value. 
You can also override this from your command line when you run the container using the hyphen E flag. So you can say docker run hyphen E, then your variable name and the value. Let's see them in action. So here, this is the sample Docker file we have. And here you can see I'm passing this ARG instruction that the variable name and then the value. And then I'm also using my ENV instruction, the variable name and then the value. Now I can override this ARG instruction when I'm using this Docker build command. And then I can override my ENV instruction when I'm using the Docker run command. So when you're using the Docker build command, you will be using this hyphen hyphen build hyphen R and then your variable name and your respective value. So here I can say something like, let's say 2.0.0. And then if you're using the Docker run command, I can use the hyphen E flag and then your variable name and then your uh, value that you want to pass. So your ARG instruction is used during the build process. Your ENV instruction is can be used during your run process. And uh, the, the ARG instruction, it is not available in the running container. Your ENV instructions, the variables are available in the running container. All right. So that's the difference basically between your ARG and your ENV. So the golden rule here is use ARG for things you need to build the image. Whenever you want to build your image from your Docker file, that's when you can use the ARG instruction and then use the ENV instruction for things you need to run uh, in your application as part of your container. Whenever you want to do that, then you make use of your ENV instruction. Just remember that. So if you're talking about the container, go with your ENV instruction. If you're talking about the image, go with your ARG instruction. Now let's talk about CMD and entry point. This is a classic point of confusion, but it's incredibly powerful once you get it. Both entry point and CMD defines what command runs when a container starts. The key is how they interact. Think of it this way. Entry point is like the executable. It sets the base command that will always run. And CMD is like the default argument. It provides default arguments to that command, which is your entry point. So basically your container runs as entry point plus CMD. So you will have the entry point plus your CMD. So your entry point will be your default command and then CMD, whatever you pass in your CMD will be passed as arguments to the entry point instructions. Now there are two forms for each of these instructions. You have the shell form and you have the exec form. We always prefer the exec form, which is basically using a JSON array syntax because it allows for proper signal handling, like sig term to stop your container gracefully. Let's look at the most common and useful pattern, like using entry point for the main program and then CMD for default arguments. So here I have a Docker file where I'm using my entry point and my CMD instructions. I'm using Alpine as my base image. And this is my default command. And this is the argument that will be passed to my uh, default command. So entry point will always be static. And whatever you pass in the CMD will be passed on to your entry point instruction. So this is basically I'll be doing a ping to my local host. So let's go ahead and uh, build this image. So docker build hyphen t let's call this as ping and this should build our image and let's run this so docker run ping and you can see here it is pinging my local host all right so that's basically what it is so ping becomes my default command and local host whatever we have passed in the cmd will be passed as argument to my entry point instruction but the power is you can easily override the cmd part all right, so that's the whole point of your uh, CMD. Whatever you pass in your CMD, you can always override it from your command line. So here, when I'm running my container, I can say docker run my uh, image name, and then I can give the command. So let's say google.com. So now I'm telling, instead of pinging the uh, local host, I'm telling it to ping my google.com. So the entry point stays fixed. So you can see here, earlier it was pinging my local host. So here it was picking my local host and now I'm able to override my CMD instruction with google.com from the command line when I'm running my container. So your entry point stays fixed, but the CMD can be overridden. But 
Now, what if you want to only use CMD? That is also possible. So within your Docker file, so let's say I don't want to use my uh, entry point instruction. I just want to use the CMD instruction. Well, you can do that as well. So I can simply say uh, uh, the command, like let's say ping, and then what do you want to do? So I want to ping my local host. And uh, now let me build this once again. So let's say 1.0 and let's run this. So we will use 1.0 and you can see it is the same. But if I override, it will override the entire command so now let's say if i say docker run and if i say uh, google.com this will replace everything what i mean by that is even this ping will get replaced so this will essentially the command the the ping local host will be replaced with just google.com which will fail telling like hey i'm not able to say this command so that's why entry point and cmd are most of the time used hand in hand so entry point you pass the default command and then cmd you pass your argument that you want to pass to your default command which is your entry point so when to use which use entry point when you want your container to behave like a dedicated executable program like you want to have a dedicated program like your ping or curl and use cmd for default arguments you expect the user to override or if you're running a one-off command. Use both together for the flexible executable with default arguments pattern, which is ideal for most application images. All right, theory is over. Let's get our hands dirty. We have a simple Go application. Our goal is to take its initial Docker image and make it drastically smaller and more secure. Now, let's first look at the before Docker file, which is basically uh, a huge image so here is my before docker file i'm using golang as my base image i'm setting my working directory i'll copy all my code and then i'm building my application and then i'm starting my application and then here i have the um, necessary application code so main.go go install and go mod uh, i have this in my github repo i'll share the link to this in the description so you can use the same thing if you want Let's build this and we will check the size of this image. So docker build hyphen t and let's say this is um, my app and let's call this as uh, before and um, let's use this which will build my docker image. So let's wait for this to complete and we will essentially see the size of this image. And done. Now let's look at the size of the image and here you can look at the size it's over 900 MB that's because it contains the entire Go tool chain which we do not need to run our compiled application or the binary. Now let's implement the ultimate optimization the multi-stage build. So here, this is my multi-stage uh, Docker file. So you can use, you can see here, I have multiple from instructions. So this is one from instruction and this is here is the other from instruction. So let's break down the magic. So stage one uses the full Golang image to compile our application. Stage two is where we start with the Alpine uh, latest, which is a minimalist Linux distribution. That's about five MB in size. And then we only copy the compiled main uh, binary from the builder stage to our second stage and nothing else. Let's build this and let's see the results. So here, this is my Docker file, the after Docker file. Let's go ahead and build this. So let's run this and this will start building our image. So let's wait for this to complete and we will see the results. and done now let's uh, list our images and here you can see the new Im image is only about 50 mb in size so this was the image uh, which was before using the multi-stage build and you can see this was over 900 mb and this is with using the multi-stage build we have reduced the image size by over 98 percent this isn't just about saving disk space and download time. This tiny image has a drastically smaller attack surface. There are no compilers, no source code and far fewer OS packages that could contain vulnerabilities. 
this is what a production ready image looks like and that brings us to the end of this session you have just graduated to writing professional grade docker files you now know how to use multi-stage builds to create lean images how to use arg and env correctly and how to wield the power of entry point and cmd these aren't just minor tips they are fundamental skills for anyone serious about containers in production Take these techniques, apply them to your own projects and watch your deployments become faster and more secure. In the next session, we are going to deep dive into Docker registries. If you found this session helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content and let me know in the comment section if you have any queries. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next session.